I've heard some, someone say something to the effect of either you get a filter for your water or you become the filter. <laughs> so, <laughs> so with respect to water, why do we want to be thinking about water as it relates to our health? What are some of the possible contaminants? What do we need to be thinking about? And, you know, assume that the listener, we have uh, listeners globally, but a lot of them do live in urban centers, such as myself. I'm in a, in a, I'm in a major city. So what are some of the things that we want to be thinking about with our water consumption? Yeah, well, the first way to set that up is, is we've made an incredible advancement to be able to live in a home and have on-demand water. You know, we have plumbing, taking water sources and making it available to people in cities and to urban environments and, and everything else. And to a large part, there's still about 2 billion people on the planet that are playing Russian roulette with dirty water, literally acute diseases, dysentery, uh, diarrhea. There, there is still, and I've been in those situations working with clean water programs around the world, Africa, India. And so the context here is we've made an amazing advancement. However, these municipalities that are cleaning the water so that it doesn't acutely kill you are doing its minimal job, right? And that minimal job hasn't caught up to the, the advancement of our chemicalized romance that we have in this world. So the smaller po molecules, the water-soluble molecules, the pesticides, the herbicides, the phthalates, the, you know, the, the famous pharmaceutical drugs that we're flushing down the toilet has gotten back into our waterways, kind of reinfecting us again. And, and, and so the municipalities haven't uh, caught up to this, this, this wide array of chemicals that we, and when we say reinfecting, you know, glyphosate, for example, that's uh, sprayed on our food and sprayed in the cotton that we're wearing mostly, that's water soluble, right? So now, as soon as that hits the soil, that's, that's in the aquifers, that's now in the, in the food that we're growing, that's now in the municipalities, and they're, they don't have a glyphosate program where they've then been filtering out glyphosate for the past, what, you know, nearly 50 years. They haven't been doing that. So that's one example of if you're not, you know, I, I go to my, you know, the lucky ones on the planet, we go to our faucet and we turn that on. But you can go to something like Environmental Working Group and type in your, your zip code and get a readout for the most part on your area, on your municipality. And you will see that it's, a, I just did this two weeks ago in mine. That's uh, Las Virginis municipality water. And it was filled full of things I'd never even heard of. And oftentimes when we have chlorine that they're still using to disinfect the water so that it makes it all the way to a tap that doesn't have that hyphoid or dysentery that, that can acutely make you very sick, it's ha having the, the, these other interactions with other organic compounds in a pipe that it doesn't magically stay clean, right? When you have stagnant water, your your breed it's a breeding ground for bacteria on top of all of the chemicals on top of the chemicals that have came from the municipality so you have a you have a coming together of chemistry and a russian roulette ourselves so if we are not filtering we are taking on a micro amount of chemicals everything from pre and pro floral alkali substances and PFOS. And that's that derivative. We'll get into that more as derivative of Teflon because it has other delicious flavors that they're, that they're using it for these days. And then of course, other phthalates and other pesticides and herbicides. So, so all of this stuff, but you know, we can go on and on about all this uh, nasty stuff in the water, but something very easy you can do is clean your water. And, and for a few hundred bucks, you can get a distillation unit 
which evaporates water, doesn't allow those constituents to come and reconstitute themselves after it's evaporated. So you clean your water, so, so it has a low TDS, total dissolved solids, or you use something like a reverse osmosis, which has a very small micron size, so it's virtually the same when it comes to distillation and a good RO system if you're changing out the filter maybe every you know, three to six months, depending on your water. Now you've got something that you've just cleaned your water. Now, now very, very important because it always comes up. We are saltwater beings. Our, our, we are electric. We have electrolytes. Every cell is a battery. Every battery needs electrolytes. Electrolytes open up the, the, the cellular ability for, for, diffusion and, and osmolotic flow of water. So it's very important to have the proper electrolytes and something you don't have to buy some special electrolyte or, or come under the duping of needing Gatorade and a plastic water bottle with uh, red number 40 connected to ADD and ADHD. You don't need to buy into that bullshit of, of that conversation. Simple as an unrefined salt or if you really want to, you know, add a pinch of it per glass, or if you have a liter and you're taking it with you, just don't overthink it. A pinch of it per glass. Now you have the correct form, Himalayan salt, unrefined Celtic sea salt. Or if you really want to go ancient plant, incredible, you can go into shilajit or deep sea minerals and and those kinds of things again you're going you're following nature you're flowing with nature and you're adding nature back into the the stripped water that you just cleaned